Morning everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Jan Kjellstra. I just brought the second milking group of our milking herd up into the holding area so they can be milked. I'm gonna scrape these alleys. We're gonna put sand bedding in quickly uh, this morning as well. You guys saw in the last video we started that. We're just gonna finish that off this morning. And then after I'm done cleaning the milking parlor, we're gonna head out to the corrals and start mucking those out. We hooked that bunning manure spreader up in the last video, got that thing ready to go. I still gotta grease it and do a little bit of maintenance, fuel the tractor up, that sort of thing. But after, we're gonna head to the corrals. Those corrals are a muddy mess right now. We would usually like to let those corrals dry out a bit before we go and scoop it all out. Makes the job a lot easier, scooping that dry manure versus the mucky slop that's in there right now. But we're kind of in an awkward limbo stage right now before seeding. The fields are dry enough for us to be out there. And for the next week or so, it's gonna be around zero degrees. So realistically, those corrals aren't gonna dry out. So we're not gonna waste a week of time this spring waiting for them to dry out. We're just gonna get working on it and that's what we're gonna to do today. Well, we're done all the morning chores. The parlor is clean, milking's done. So now we're gonna start hauling manure. We're gonna start out by taking corral number six out, chase all the cows into our chute handling system. This is gonna allow me to drive in and out of that corral without needing to worry about animals getting out in between loads. That's corral six, this is the one we're gonna be starting with. The goal today is just to kind of clean that slop up in front of this corral. We're not really gonna to touch those straw packs yet. Those are dry, cows can lay on it. We just want to scoop all the slop out now and hopefully these corrals will dry out a lot quicker. It is frozen right now, so hopefully that makes it easier. Kind of like it's solid and dry, but uh, just frozen. And the cold weather will also help if the fields are a little bit uh, soft yet in some spots. Hopefully we'll just float right over. Well, that's what I mean by uh, losing your boots in the mud. Oh, that is cold. <laughs> so I'm sitting here editing this. I realize someone's probably gonna say, man, how do you lose your boots in the mud like that? Basically, you step in, you're running, trying to get the cows out. You don't have time to stop. And then your boot goes all the way almost to the top in the mud and it kind of suction cups in there and you're pretty much done at that point. And that's kind of what happened to me. And then I was maybe too stubborn and uh, the other one came off too right away. So that's what happened there. Oh, that's too funny. It kind of sucks. Oh yeah, it's happened to me once too. Just one foot. Oh, it's been a while. It's been a while since my feet have been that cold. <laughs> Holy. <laughs> All right, well, we got all cleaned up there. Hopefully we're gonna have a better second half of the day. Dad started though. He uh, started with the wheel loader. You, know, you start scraping the beginning of the corral and then you back the manure wagon in and just start filling that first load. Like I said, we're first gonna try and get the slop out. We're not really gonna touch those straw packs at all. Just go from corral to corral and this is gonna allow those corrals to dry out a bit. And hopefully the cows will be easier to move around in there. As you guys can see, based on my morning, it's not the easiest to walk around in all that muck. That's why we're gonna kind of concentrate on that first here, get that done, and then maybe, you know, in a week or so, we'll get back to those straw packs whenever we're done dealing with the slop. 
Got to open the gates here at the back. We like to keep these gates closed in case animals get out like they did this morning, I guess. And uh, keeps them off the road. Just dumped the first load, backed her back in the corral. Now I'm gonna start filling it up. So we prefer to keep feeding with the new Holland wheel loader. It does have the grapple, so we might steal that for the straw packs, but for now, this slop that we're cleaning up, the case loader is just as good, and it's a bit stronger. It's got a lot more torque, nicer handling loader. Just like that, it's another load ready to go. I'm not filling them full at all because I don't want to muck the road up. We're super self-conscious about keeping the road clean. The other thing I'm kind of worried about this spreader, there's a rubber seal at the back here. If there's too much liquid muck in this wagon, sometimes that seal busts out and it leaks a bunch through the beaters here. That would be pretty bad if it happened on the road, obviously. So I'm just gonna keep an eye on that and make sure that seal stays in good condition throughout the day. We took a break there from hauling solid manure and we quickly ripped out to our field. The drill is out here. This is that field with the winter rye and we're putting on some nitrogen, some extra fertilizer this spring and that's what's happening this afternoon. So we're gonna get the drone up in the air. We're gonna check out the crop, see if we can find any right now and also see the fertilizer that's being applied to the field. Out in the field here, you can see they spilt a little bit of the stuff. So this is it, what's going on. It's kind of like a green uh, coating around the nitrogen. Uh, this is just to help protect it against uh, exhausting into the atmosphere apparently. So nitrogen really likes to turn into a gas and basically disappear from your field. So that coating is supposed to help prevent that from happening. And hopefully it all ends up in the soil by the plant where it needs to be. You can see everywhere all the little dots on the soil that's exactly what we're doing here just spreading it out nicely evenly over the field and this is our crop right here that winter rye you can see a lot of it is dead but it's kind of green in some spots and i think it's even been growing a little bit maybe this spring so it's looking good the field looks a little green already in uh, the middle of april so it's kind of odd it's not usual for us this is the first time we've ever grown this crop and it's kind of just to provide maybe a little bit of additional security for feed and straw for the farm. That's our goal with this. Dad will have to come on here sometime and explain exactly why he wanted to do it. But uh, yeah, that's a different thing that we're doing on the farm this year. Unfortunately, I accidentally deleted all the footage from the drill out in the field, but for some reason I accidentally screen recorded it all on my phone while I was filming. So these shots are what my phone is seeing live while I'm filming with the drone. Figured I'd put that up. Some of you guys might find that a little bit interesting. You can see some stats like the distance it is away from me. The altitude here, we're like 28 meters up in the air. You can see my speed, 13 kilometers an hour. I believe the drone goes up to 72 kilometers an hour. So that's kind of cool. But you can see here the drill. There's a shot from the side in a couple seconds here. It's um, pulling through 
but above the ground. So we're not uh, tilling up the ground yet right here. Uh, it's just spraying that granular nitrogen on top of the soil. And that's what we're doing here. You guys might be curious what those zebra stripes are. Uh, you can see them on the drill right now. That's just an overexposure warning that the drone gives me while I'm filming. Just to give me a heads up that this is too bright. I should tone the darkness down a little bit in the camera settings. That load right there is the last full load from the krill that we've been working on today. So that's awesome. I need to go grab some help to get that corral back in there. And then we're going to start on this one right here. This is probably the next muddiest corral. And there's some littler calves in here. So we'd like to get that one cleaned out next. They sure do love that nice clean corral. You can see if they're not at the feed bunk eating because they didn't have feed all day. They're just sprinting around full speed. They love it. Good to see. Okay, we opened up our next corral. It's another mud pit. But uh, right behind the water bowl here, we got the concrete pad. It's also behind the feed bunks there. We do this in every single one of our corrals, except you can see here, there's a little bit of gravel still from last year, but right here, there's a gnarly drop off. I mean, it's probably at least a foot. Yeah, it's as tall as my boots. So more than a foot, probably a foot and a half right there. So if I was to back the wagon over this ledge, it's either gonna break the tire, it's maybe gonna break the concrete after the wagon's full. I have to put some gravel there before I back the wagon into this corral. So we're going to grab the wheel loader and do that. And then we'll back the manure wagon in here, start hammering away at this corral. Well, it's far from perfect, but that'll do. You can see it's a nice ramp. I tried to do as good a job as possible because it is gonna stay there for quite a long time. Last spring, we just didn't have a lot of this material and you can kind of see it right here. So once the stuff is in place and it gets packed down by the cows, a bit of moisture mixes into it. It's definitely there for a couple of years. This is a special mix of gravel. It's not just a bunch of stones. Uh, there's some sand, there's clay, and then you got the kind of assorted gravel in there, so. Works really good. It'll save your tires and it'll avoid chipping the crap out of that concrete. Well, we took three loads out of the corral. We'll finish it up tomorrow. Putting the corral back in there now. Come on. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. hey. Good soup. <laughs> That's gonna be it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. Really helps grow the channel. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.